I go hard cuz hey you guys happy Sunday I hope everybody's doing good today I know it's weird to be seeing me going live on a Sunday but it is a lot to get into so much has happened this weekend like it has been nuts and y'all told me Friday that I can go live whenever I want whenever I want to talk about stuff I can just go live so thank y'all for giving me that um so I hope you guys are doing good come on in come on in come on in it is a lot to get into today um, I was thinking about doing a call-in show, but, uh, uh mama gotta have a life too. Um, so I'm just gonna tell y'all my opinions on stuff and then I, you know, I'm, I gotta leave. I gotta leave. So we'll probably do a call-in show Monday. We'll just do like a dedicated call-in show, but I really want to talk about this beef and I don't want to be like, it's a beautiful day right now in Minnesota. It's about 80 degrees. Okay. Um, I'm looking cute, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go on a date or something. So, yeah, no calling show today. <laughs> but we'll do one probably tomorrow. But, um, yeah, it's been a lot going on with this whole situation with Drake, uh, the whole crew, everybody's coming for him, honey. Now, let me keep it real. I wanted to go live yesterday, but DJ Academics was live. And when I tell you this man was live for at least eight hours, like... I watched his live, like I don't really catch a lot of his live streams, but as soon as, cause you know, he's a huge Drake fan. So as soon as this hit, he was live. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like, it's a beautiful day. I started repotting my uh, snake plants. So I was outside repotting my plants and I had him on my phone, you know, just talking and stuff, like going through my speakers outside. So I'm watching him and, and that took me about an hour. Then I cooked dinner and he was still live, but I was there when he got the song from Rick Ross's people because it was somebody from Rick Ross's camp that called into his show and they gave him the Rick Ross diss track. So he played it live and I remember everybody was going crazy. He was speechless. Joe Budden was speechless. It was really cool to kind of watch that play out live. And then I ate dinner and he was still live. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm out. So at that point I left. Now, let me say this, okay? Yes, for eight hours, a full-time shift. Like, literally, I was doing so much throughout the day. I would check in. He was still live. Then I went to go hang out with my friends. He was still live. I'm just like, I, I don't know how he does it because my ass would have been numb, would have been thirsty, but I, he drinks, so maybe he can do it because he's, you know, because he drinks a lot. I don't know. But after two hours, child, I'm ready to go. But um, so it was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. Now, then, let me say this. One of the things I noticed with the date with the Drake diss is that the females are here for it. When I tell you when it first dropped, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like I loved it. The beat. I was in the middle of Walmart, you know, dancing and stuff. Like, okay, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. I'm listening for like, you know, the disses. And then I remember Janisa, I think after Madia posted it, Janisa texted me, was like, oh my God, girl. Oh my God, that diss is fire. And I'm like, yes, yes. So I noticed like all the girls are here for it. Like all the girls were like, and y'all know I'm not a big Drake fan anymore. I used to be a big Drake fan, but then like his antics over the years have kind of turned me off. So everybody knows like, you know, the TT in 2023 is not the TT in 2015, 2016, right? So I'm not the biggest Drake fan, but I I, I know how to be unbiased and I listen to it with an unbiased ear. And I, I'm honestly here for it. I love the beat. I love the fact that he, he kind of, pulled the 50 cents piggy bank. That's kind of how he went with it, the whole drop and give me 50. Um, it reminded me when 50 cent, you know, if y'all are into hip hop and everything, it reminded me of when 50 cent went at the whole industry. You know what I'm saying? And for me, this is what hip hop is about, okay? It's not about taking it to the streets. It's about putting it on wax. And I was feeling it. Literally every female I talked to yesterday, we were all here for it. And none of us are big Drake fans, but we were like, yes. You know what I'm saying? He was calling folks out. You know what I'm saying? Even the stuff that I was saying on my live stream when I was saying like, okay, yes, Drake has been sneak dissing, but people sneak diss him too. But let's keep it real. Drake helped a lot of these dudes get their start. He helped a lot of them get their number one hits. And he said that in the first line when he was talking about future. So Drake definitely, you know, went in. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go through his lyrics of the diss track. I have it pulled up here on Genius. So we're going to go through them. And 
I have receipts to kind of correlate with some of the stuff that he's saying, but I really like this whole, what is it called? Push-ups, drop and give me 50. I'm feeling it. But what I noticed with a lot of the guys, because even I asked my son, I asked both of them, I'm like, oh, you know, Drake just dropped his new diss track. I, I'm loving it. You know, hip hop is back. And they're like, it was okay. It's mid. Like literally every dude is like, it's mid. You only like it because he's spilling tea. I don't know what's up with the guys. I feel like a lot of guys are just like, eh, it's all right. And I even hung out with a bunch of dudes yesterday from Gen Z. And they were like, it's okay. All he did was talk about Kendrick's shoe size. I'm like, did you not hear? Did you not decipher the lyrics? Maybe I'm just very analytical. I like to decipher stuff. So when I'm listening to stuff, I'm writing it down. I'm taking notes like, oh shit. But they're just like hearing what they want to hear and dismissing it. He put a lot of shots in this diss track. I mean, he even went at Kanye. He went at John ja Morant. Like, did y'all miss that? The John ja Morant tea? So I don't know. I was here for the tea. I was definitely here for it. But I feel like a lot of the dudes are like, oh, it's mid. It's okay. It's, I don't know. Drake be getting a lot of hate from a lot of these guys in the industry. But I don't care. Like, I think a lot of the girls really liked it. I don't know. I feel like more females, like, are really like, no, this was dope. He went in. You know what I'm saying? And most of the guys are just like, eh, it is what it is. But we're going to go ahead and break down some of the lyrics. So let me go ahead, share my screen, child. We're going to go on the little genius thing. So give me just a second here. And we're just going to go one by one and also just pull some little receipts on little things that stood out to me. So let me hold up. Stop this screen. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, here we go. All right. So we got the genius verse. I hate when it's like on the opposite side. I don't know. Do I like, some people like this better because they feel like they can see me closer. And you like this better, mm -mm. whatever works, I guess. Let me see. Yeah, nah. Okay, we'll do that. I think y'all can still see everything, right? Okay, y'all like this better? Okay. So y'all can still see the lyrics. So he starts off and he says, I could never be nobody's number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. You pussies can't get booked outside America for Nan. I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan, okay? So that was him going at Future. And I told you guys this in my live stream, like two live streams ago, that Future can, you know, say what he wants to say. But literally, you kind of got solidified because of Drake. Granted, Future been doing his thing. But as far as number ones, remember, there was a whole Drake and Future tour. They dropped albums together. Uh, Jumpman, Jumpman, Jumpman. That was my song, okay? So Drake really did, you know what I'm saying? He really did help Future out a lot. Let's keep that real. Then he goes on to say, um, I'm not going to read everything. Well, I'm going to read most of it. Uh, let's see here. Backstage in my city, it was friend zone. You won't take no chain off of us. How the fuck you big stepping with a size seven men zone? Now that's about Kendrick Lamar. Now everybody knows, you know, I love me some K Dot, okay? But he's a tiny man, okay? Kendrick is small. He's about five five. Um, he's shorter than me, and I'm a female. So Kendrick is a small man, and you know, sometimes small men have small feet. So he's making fun of his shoe size. And so a lot of dudes are like, oh, that's swag, boo. But I noticed most of the guys who were mad about the shoe size line, they're not taller than 5'7". So maybe that's why they were upset. I don't know. I'm just saying. But I thought it was funny. It made me chuckle. Um, then he goes on to say, <laughs> dude, it made me, I laughed. I'm sorry. Um, and, then he was, and then also he was saying that you're not going to take no chains off of us because Kendrick was talking about, you know what I'm saying, taking off chains, snatching chains off and burning tattoos, honey, in his line towards Drake. Then he says, um, this the bark with the bite, nigga. What's up? I know my pictures on your wall when y'all need to cook up. Extortion, baby, your whole career's been shook up. Cause Top told you to drop and give me 50 like some push-ups, okay? The last one, Brit, you really not on shit. They make excuses for you cause they hate to see me lit. What? Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down, 
time, right? <laughs> TT over here rapping and shit. Okay, so when he's saying that, he's saying that, you know, I know when you in the studio, Kendrick, you got a big old picture of me in your studio because I give you, you know what I'm saying, energy. I give you inspiration to cook up your latest hits, okay? Then he goes on to say that basically um, Top, who is the owner of TDE, who was um, Kendrick Lamar's manager, um, he's basically saying that Top tells him what to do, what to, you know, what to say. If he says, drop and give me 50, you're going to drop and give him 50. Plus, there's that video of Kendrick Lamar, you know, on the ground doing push-ups for some reason. Maybe he's teaching his followers how to do push-ups. But that video has gone viral again, which is funny. Um, then he starts, let's see here. Did that? Okay. They make, okay, yeah, yeah, this part. They make excuses for you because they hate to see me lit. I agree. I agree. I do feel like there's a lot. And, and again, I don't think Drake is innocent in this. I think Drake does a lot of bullshit behind the scenes. But I do feel like people do hype up Kendrick more just because they know that he's probably the main person. It was J. Cole, but Jermaine, I, I can't even, I, I'm still disappointed in Jermaine. I can't even call him J. Cole anymore. I just call him Jermaine at this point. Since you, you don't want to be a rapper and you over here apologizing and shit. I, we, I'm just going to call him Jermaine. So, you know, it was always those three. And I think because people feel like Kendrick can really go at, you know, Drake. And so people do try to, like, you know, kind of downplay Drake because they really want to see Kendrick and, you know, go at him and be the top in the industry. So I do agree with Drake on that line. Then he says, oh, okay, I can highlight this. Okay, let's go. He says, pull your contract. We got to see the split. The way you're doing splits, bitch, your pants might rip. <laughs> It's, it's corny, but cute. I like that. Basically saying like Kendrick, from what we're hearing in the streets, because y'all know LA is big on extortion, right? You know, the gangs be extorting people. I've done videos about checking in. Not me checking in, because I'm not checking in the shit. The only thing I'm checking is to TSA, okay? But for like a lot of rappers in the industry, they got to check in to LA and all that stuff, right? So he's basically saying that, you know, Top took a lot of Kendrick's money. Like they're basically split, splitting... 50-50 is what he's kind of hinting at, which is a huge split for a manager or management team to take. And so he's saying that, and then he's saying, but then the pants ripping, I don't know, it made me chuckle, I don't know. Drake is corny, but that part was funny to me. Uh, then he says, um, you better do that motherfucking show inside the bitty. Maroon 5 need a verse, you better make it witty. And then, when, and then we need a verse for the Swifties. Top say drop, you better give him 50. Now, if y'all remember, one of my favorite songs uh, was Taylor Swift and Kendrick Lamar. Uh, that's why he brought up the Swifties. So, you know, a lot of Swifties were like, well, are we in it? Because Kendrick Lamar and Taylor Swift, they did a song a few years ago. Let me see if I have that clip here where Kendrick is talking about it. I have a lot of receipts. Okay, here we go. This was like nine years ago. Again, one of my favorite, you know, songs, Bad Blood. Kendrick Lamar and Taylor Swift. Talented artist, definitely. She's passionate about her craft, you know. I think it's this, you know, when you put two people in the studio, we all have to have the same type of passion for the music in order for it to be right. I love to make Kendrick sense. Gap. So it's not really just about- Okay, so that is what, that is the part he was saying. That's why he brought up the Swifties. And he's basically saying that, you know, top, like most people would not think that Kendrick would ever get on a song with Taylor Swift. Like, let's keep it real, right? Most people would have never thought that. And so when people saw Kendrick doing this song with Taylor Swift, it was like, well, what's this about? You supposed to be hardcore hip hop, you know, from, well, not hardcore, but you know what I'm saying? More woke. It was just a weird connection or whatever. So Drake is basically saying that Top forced him to do a, you know, to do a collaboration with Taylor Swift and Maroon 5. But force or not, I'm sorry, but Black, Bad Blood, that was a bop when that came out. I love that song and I still love that song to this day. So. Shout out to the Swifties. Shout out to, you know what I'm saying? Taylor Swift and Kendrick Lamar. Still a bot. Then he goes on to say this. Peeps, uh, pip squeak, pipe down. You ain't no big three. SZA got a wipe down. Travis got a wipe, da uh, wipe down. Savage got a wipe down. Like your label boy, you in the scope right now. You ain't feel the aftermath of what I write down. 
So basically talking about, you know, you keep trying to say that you're in the big three, you're a peep squeak, you need this pipe down. Um, on your label that you've left, Scissor's doing a lot better than you. Travis Scott um, is doing better than you. 21 Savage is doing better. So he's saying like, he would look at them more as a top three than he would look at KDOT. And then, um, let me see here. Then remember at one point he was signed to Aftermath, so that's why he bought up the Aftermath uh, verse as well. And he said, you're in, you know, uh, what'd he say? Like your label boy, you in the scope right now. Inner scope records. So, you know, a lot of little entendres in there. So now if you guys remember, recently Top did an interview because people were like, well, what are you going to do now that your biggest artist, Kendrick, has left? What are you going to do? And he's basically like, we have SZA, we have other artists. Like just because Kendrick left doesn't mean that, you know, the mansion is about to collapse, which I thought was really cool. I thought it was a really classy response. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to what Top had to say right here really quick. Just, just you know, just little receipts. Um, In this last year and literally being like the biggest artist on the planet, you know what I mean? Not like one of them, like the biggest artist in everything she did with her album. It just speaks testament to like the legacy that TDE has built over the years. and. You know, those are big shadows. That's something that as a up and coming artist in TDE, you always wonder, how do I fill those shoes? What am I supposed to do to stand out? And I think that that pressure is really, you know, the the mindset that you try to, you need to escape from because then you're always putting unwarranted pressure on yourself when it's really like, yes, I'm from TDE, but I'm just also reason and I need to focus on being reason and establishing that. All right, so that's top for y'all who don't know who top is. So, you know, basically, you know, he is speaking on that, like, okay, even though Kendrick is gone, because Kendrick started his own label, whatever, um, you know, we still have other artists and stuff like that. So I thought that was like a really, you know, he, him mentioning that was kind of cool. Um, so, you know, I seen SZA kind of getting mad, like, oh, now why am I in it? Girl, you better be happy they put you in that shit. You better take that tea and you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't say anything bad. He's giving SZA props. So I don't know why people were like, oh, he's talking shit about SZA. No, he's not. He's giving her props. Like he's looking at her more of a top three than Kendrick. Okay, so then he goes on to say, uh, let's see here. I'm at the top of the mountain and you type right now. Just to have a talk with your ass, I have to hike down. Bars, okay? Meaning that he's so high on top of the mountain, he has to hike. Hike downward to go talk to Kendrick. He feels like he's that above Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? His words, not mine. Then he says the difference between Mike then and Mike now. What the fuck is a V? Uh, okay, he said, what the fuck is this? 20 versus one, nigga. What's a prince to a king? He a son, nigga. Get more love from the city that you from, nigga. What? Okay, all right, let's write this down. So basically, um, if you he's he's upset because he feels like this is 20 people versus one. It's just me. It's one thing if it's me and K Dot having an issue. We've been throwing subliminals since like 2013, 2014. We've been throwing shots at each other. But now all of a sudden, like everybody else is coming out the woodwork. It's not cool. 20 versus one, that's bullshit. That's what he's saying. And he's saying, you know, what's a prince to a king? He's a son, nigga. And the reason why he's saying that is if you guys remember in Kendrick's verse, um, let me see, I wrote it down here. When he did the lady, okay, so he was he was saying in his verse that he, the son that he did with um, Future and Metro Boomin, um, he was saying motherfucker, he was saying motherfuck the big three, it's just big me, nigga bum what, I'm really like that. Your best work is a light pack. Nigga, Prince, outlive Mike Jack, okay? So basically saying that Prince outlived Michael Jackson an additional seven years. The reason why he brought up Michael Jackson and Prince is, one, um, before Prince died, Prince was really, you know, for all the Prince fans, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Minneapolis, okay? The purple people. Uh, Prince was really giving Kendrick Lamar props on To Pimp a Butterfly. Like, he really loved that album. Um, and they were supposed to collaborate together, if y'all don't know. But then, unfortunately, Prince died. The reason why he brought that up is because um, on the song that Drake did with J. Cole, when they were sending shots, basically, he was saying that he's the new you know, king of hip hop, He's a, he was comparing himself to Michael Jackson. So that is why Kendrick said that. So he was basically comparing himself to Michael Jackson. 
And he was not feeling that. I just want to make sure I, I, I wrote all my little notes, child. I want to make sure because I was going through like breaking all this down. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next. Then, okay, this is funny. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. So now the part about how he gets more love um, in your city than you do, nigga. Okay, so this can be two, two people. One, remember he went to Compton a few years ago and he did that song with the game. When the game brought him out to Compton and it was a, uh, for the 100 video. So I feel like he's throwing shots at Kendrick in that aspect because he went to Compton. You know what I'm saying? They showed him love. He had a good old funky time. Let me go ahead and pull up the Compton receipts when he went to Compton with the game. I have a lot of receipts. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and watch this really quick. Man, Drake just kept saying, man, I can't believe I'm on Black Wall Street, man. I can't believe I'm in Compton, man. I, this is dope. He was like, I was, you know, a kid in Toronto, just wanted to, like, be there, and now I'm here. So I think he had more fun than anybody else, man. But, you know, the hood really embraced him, and, uh, you know, we got in and got out. Drake is dope. He's a dope artist, so, uh, you know, homie, man. Live down the All right, I'm glad y'all are liking the breakdown. They said they're really loving, okay, Tyler says, I love this breakdown, T. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are liking it. I didn't know if I was being too analytical, but I don't care. I really listen to lyrics. I don't know what these guys are talking about, but there's some real bars in this shit, okay? So, okay, let's go back to the, this tab. Okay, cool. So, okay, so now the other person that he could be talking to as well is Metro Boomin because Drake gets a lot of love in Atlanta. He just does, you know what I'm saying? Before all the beef with Metro in future, he was always in Atlanta doing stuff with Atlanta artists. We know he's very close with 21 Savage. You know, Atlanta is also like one of his second homes. So I feel like both bars can go towards Kendrick with the whole Compton thing and him being in the 100 video, or it could be towards Metro Boomin. But this next one, I, I literally... I died when I heard this. Uh, so we're going to start from here. Okay. I get more love in your city than... Hold on. I get more love in the city that you from, nigga. Metro, shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. That part was so damn funny. Why? If you are a Metro Boomin fan like I am and you're subscribed to Metro Boomin... I love Metro Boomin and I like Zaytoven, right? So I am subscribed to Metro Boomin. And so when I heard that, I fell out because Metro Boomin, like... This was like maybe like three, four months ago... Like, he likes to help a lot of up-and-coming producers and beat makers. So if you ask him questions, he will take time out to, like, respond. And he's, like, a, he's really fun to watch. I don't know. I just like Metro Boomin, right? So let me show you guys this video. So this is why th that part had me cracking up. A lot of people are like, oh, that's whack. But no, it's funny because if you follow Metro Boomin, Metro Boomin had a whole vlog talking about start with your drums first sometimes. Bam! Okay? Y'all not ready? Like, Drake was really... <laughs> I don't care. Drake was really saying some real shit. So we're going to go ahead and listen to what Metro Boomin had to say. This was just a few months ago, okay? That um, the symphony event for Spider-Verse and a young producer approached me. He was like, yo, I don't be knowing should I start my drums first or the melody first or what do you do? What should I do? And I basically was like, you know, whatever speaks to you, whatever's inspiring you in that moment the most. Like, if you have a drum beat in your mind or you might have a melody in your mind first like you gotta go with the inspiration but generally i don't always start one each uh each way it's just we're just gonna play small simple we're not gonna watch the whole thing but that is what he that's why he said that because he did a whole vlog like teach people like oh you know you can do the drums first it's whatever you're feeling so that's why he was like um you know like metro booming like shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. Like, I don't care. That part was funny as hell. So kudos to Drake on that. That was fun. Made me laugh. Like, I laughed for like a good 10 minutes. I like had to like go back and replay it like, hold up. <laughs> Not even call a Metro a hoe and tell him to go make some drums, nigga. <laughs> Drake is a mess, okay? All right. So then, um, let's see. The next one. Let's see here. We're at, we're at. Then he says, yeah, I'm the sixth guy. I'm the front runner. Y'all niggas managers was Chubb. He a blunt runner. Now that's for uh, The weekend Because as you know, The weekend he sang a song, honey, dissing Drake. And so in that song, he was talking about Drake Shooter. And how like Drake Shooter, um, what's his name? 
bank, whatever, something nice, y'all can write it in the chat. I be forgetting his name. But all he does is make TikTok videos. He went from being a shooter to a TikToker. And so that's what The Weeknd was saying. So now Drake is clapping back at The Weeknd. Then he goes on to say, um, did y'all write the name? I can't even think of his name. Something, something so nice or not so nice or something like that. Baca, thank you, T. Rich. Baca, Baca, so nice or Baca, not nice. But he's on TikTok. Like now, he's like a full time TikToker. Very strange, but okay. So then he goes on to say, claim the six and you boys ain't even from it. When you boys got rich, I had to run from it. Cash blow and able bread out here tricking. Shit we do for bitches, he doing for niggas. What the fuck? Then he goes on to say, jets, whips, chains, wicked, wicked, wicked. Basically going back and, you know, talking about the future verse. But he's saying that, you know, uh, Abel, AKA The Weeknd, he's also struggling. He's out here, you know, tricking off on management and, you know, his boys. He's spending more money on niggas than he is on bitches. So that was kind of his shot towards him. And he's saying that basically you're not even from the six. And when you got money, you had to run about the six. You know, y'all are basically trying to like claim a city that you guys are not really from, okay? So obviously there's a lot of like, I guess Canadian beef. I'm not, you know, I don't know a whole lot about the Canadian music scene. Um, but it looks like there's all types of underground, you know, Canadian beef. A. <laughs> I know they say A a lot <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> okay, so then he says that. Uh, let's see here. Ah, okay. Then he goes, Drizzy, uh, Drizzy Chippendale probably got your bitch Chanel. I just got him dumb, boy, don't make me have to chip a nail. Cause you know, Drake likes, you know, he's sassy, honey. He keeps his nails done. And he said, you know, don't make him, you know, step off his throne and chip a nail. Uh, I, it's sassy to me. I don't like when straight men do their nails. I mean, like, you know, clean your nails and stuff like that. But all that, you know, nail leave the nail polish. If you're a straight man, leave the nail polish for the ladies. Just my opinion. Don't get offended. I'm just saying, okay? So yeah, he said, you know, he don't make him chip a nail, okay? Uh, then he goes on to say, rolling loud stage, y'all was turnt, y'all was slick as hell. Shit probably change if your BM starts to kiss and tell. What? Okay, so let's break that down. So y'all remember the whole rolling loud thing went viral with Metro Boomin and, um, and Future. They were on stage, they were hype, you know, they played a snippet of the song, but they didn't play the full verse. So nobody knew about the Kendrick Lamar verse until that um, that song dropped on the internet. When they were on Rolling Loud, they just played their verse. And so then you seen Travis Scott, he was hype. He was, you know, play the song, play the song. Travis Scott was super, super hype. And so I think that last part can go towards Travis or ASAP Rocky. He says, uh, should it probably change if your BM starts to kiss and tell? Now, you know he's been tied to the Kardashians, so that could be a shot at Travis because Travis was super hype on stage. So that could be a shot towards Kylie Jenner because, you know, there were rumors that they had messed around at one point. Or it could be a shot at ASAP Rocky because we all know ASAP Rocky, you know what I'm saying, diss Drake as well, which he should have because Drake has thrown a lot of shots at Rihanna. So basically saying, you know, if your baby mama starts talking, y'all gonna be sick to y'all stomach. Don't, don't push me. So I think that could go towards both of them, okay? So now let's see here. Okay, hugs and kisses, man. Don't tell me about no switches. I'll be rocking every fucking chain I own next to visit. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I be with bodyguards like Whitney. Top say drop. Your little midget, your little midget ass better fucking drop. So in this part, he's saying like, you're not gonna take none of my chains. Y'all are not about that life. I will wear every chain I own. Every chain in my jewelry closet, I will wear it and come to the streets. I will walk the streets of Compton, bitch, okay? Y'all ain't gonna snatch shit. So that was a shot at Kendrick, but... The part that got the internet kind of blowed the next time when he says, I be with bodyguards like Whitney. Okay? So let's go back to this, right? Remember the movie, The Bodyguard? You know, I will always love you, right? Whitney Houston, the bodyguard. She fell in love with Kevin Costner, who was her bodyguard. Well, Kendrick Lamar's wife, her name is Whitney. So he's insinuating that he might have some tea that while Kendrick is out here, you know, writing woke raps, Whitney might be creeping with the bodyguard. That's what Drake is insinuating. That's what I take from that. But Drake might also want to simmer down a bit 
because I don't know if you didn't learn anything from the Pusher T situation, sir. But remember, that's why Pusher T went at your ass, okay? Because when you were running your mouth in the Duppy song, you were talking about Virginia Williams, who is Pusher T's wife. And Pusher T was like, nah, he wants to talk about my wife. He wants to bring up Virginia Williams and talk about me getting married. I'm spilling his tea. And that is when we got the classic uh, a Didion or a Dadion, the story of Adion, that song when he basically called out Drake for having a baby with a porn star and hiding his child from the world. Okay? So, you know, Drake might want to simmer down a bit. You bringing up people's wives. The last time you bought up somebody's wife, you got ethered. So much he had to go run to Jay Prince and Jay Prince had to make some calls and, you know, get everybody simmered down and calmed down. So that's all I'm saying. I was, very, I was very shocked that he went there again with the wife references. So maybe he's really trying to piss K-Dot off. I'm just saying, okay? So now, let's see here. Where are we at? Okay. Then he says, niggas out here really talking like I'm 50A. Niggas really got me out here rapping what I'm living. I might take your latest girl and cuff her like I'm Ricky. I can't believe he jumped in this nigga turning 50. Did y'all miss that verse? I laughed. I cackled. That was so funny. He's talking about Officer Rick Ross. Y'all remember Rick Ross before he became the biggest boss so far or whatever the hell? He used to be a corrections officer. Okay, Officer Ricky, 50 Cent clowned him about this for years. They beat for a long time. And he's saying, like, I can't believe you would jump into this. Like, Rick Ross, I really liked you. Like, I looked up to you. Like, you know what I mean? We have a lot of hits together. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're sitting here picking sides and unfollowing me and shit on social media. Y'all know when folks unfollow people, it's serious. It's serious for these celebrities. For people like me, I don't give a damn. People are following and following me all the time, deuces. But for these celebrities, they really get in their feelings. They cry, and they, they, they hold grudges. They take it very personal. So when Rick Ross and French Montana and all them dudes unfollowed Drake last week, he obviously felt the way. So now he's calling out Officer Ricky and said, you know, I'll cuff your girl like Officer Ricky. So that was a shot at Rick Ross. I was here for it. And then he also said, this nigga's turning 50. Okay, then he says, every song that made it on the chart. He got it from Drizzy. Spend that little check you got and stay up out my business. Worry about what's ever going on with you and up. Uh, finish, spill the tea. He held back. He held back on that part, okay? So he's right. He's not lying about this. Every sign that Rick Ross hit that has gone like, on the billboard, number one, where he's gotten a lot of critical acclaim has been because he collaborated with Drake. Rick Ross has been one of the main benefactors of the Drake stimulus package, okay? Y'all would not take that from Drake. This is what it means to be unbiased. I will give props where props are due. He's not lying. Rick Ross benefited from the Drake stimulus package and now he's throwing shots, how dare you? That is what Drake is saying, right? So. Uh, uh, so he said, you know, the money that you made with me, with these collaborations, go spend it and stay up out my business before I spill your tea about you and, eh. Now, legend has it, because he didn't say the name, he stopped. He was running, stopped. He, he left us with a cliffhanger. I'm about to fall off the cliff, bitch. I'm having too much fun, y'all. I'm having too much fun. Hope y'all are enjoying this stream. The word on the street is that he's talking about Diddy. People are saying that, you know, there might have been some things with Officer Ricky and Diddy. And that is why he stopped. He, he wanted to just spill a bit, but not too much. Like, keep on playing with me. I'm going to put it all out there. So, and you guys know that um, Drake and uh, Diddy, they're not, you know, they don't get along. He doesn't like uh, Diddy. Diddy slapped him once upon a time. I don't know if y'all know that T. But yeah, Diddy slapped Drake once upon a time in Miami. So he's, well, he's gonna go there, Ricky. You keep on playing. He will go there. All right, so then let's see, what else? What's next? 
Mmm. I love this part. Ah! How did y'all miss this? Okay. He goes, then he says this. Shout out to the hooper that be busting on the gritty. We know why you mad, nigga, and I ain't even tripping. All that little heartbroken Twitter shit for bitches. What? He's talking about John Morant. Okay, so if y'all don't know, when everything first went down, when Metro Boomin and Future dropped their song, John Morant was seen being messy in the comment section of uh, Instagram. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up this little tweet here of John Morant. Let's see if I can. I'm gonna stop sharing this real quick and show y'all. Or can I show both? Let me see. I might be able to show. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, hold on. All right. Let me show y'all this. This was John Morant. He was on Metro Boomin's profile. So Metro Boomin says, once you pick a side, stay there. Hashtag, we don't trust you. John Morant came on and said, stay on that side. Okay? So he felt the way. So that shot is at John Morant. So Drake, don't miss anything. Drake is just like us. He's nosy. He be in these comment sections. He got fake profiles and shit. He be, you know, sipping tea in these comment sections. So he's seen John Morant speaking. So that's why that, lamp, that line was for him. Now, this is what else. The reason why John Morant is mad at Drake, I think there's two reasons. But if you guys don't know, there's a 40-year-old woman. Shout out to just all the badass 40-year-olds out here pulling these little young dudes. I swear, y'all, these young dudes really like these older women. So John Morant was dating this 40-year-old IG model. And then Messy Drake, hold on, damn it, wrong one, hold up. He pulled up to the basketball game with her. This is her right here. Her. They came to the basketball game together, but she was dating John Morant when he was 22, and she's 40, okay? What is her, I wrote, I wrote her name down, what is her name? It's like Johanna or something like that. Johanna Leah, I want to say. Yeah, Johanna Leah. That's her name. So at one point, John Morant and her were kicking it. Then Drake slid up with her. So let me pull up. Hold up. Let me share something else. I have her page here. She a baddie, though. She's very pretty. Where is, I have a few articles here. Okay, we got that. Got that. Okay, this is the other person that I feel like John Morant is mad about, okay? So we got the older lady that he was dating. Okay, let me share this screen. See, I had to keep receipts because a lot of my audience, they're not hip hop heads. So, you know, we deal with receipts here. So this is, this was in 2022. John ja Morant and this lady had been dating. So Drake's ex-girlfriend, Johanna Leah, 41, reportedly dating basketball star John ja Morant, 22. Okay. So these little young dudes are going after these grown women. So that's her right there with her son. And so Drake, you know, he pulled up with her. But I also feel like that line, the, the drama between John Morant and Drake could be this. Remember, who was John Morant first dating before he even got with the 40-year-old? Y'all not ready? Brooklyn. He was dating Brooklyn Nicole, who is Lotto's little sister. Okay? They broke up about a year or so ago. Now, who is Drake being linked to? Are y'all following me? Remember, this was just a month ago. Boom! Drake spotted out with Lotto's sister, Brooklyn Nicole, who is 21 years old. You see how, you see why we keep receipts on this channel, okay? If y'all are loving this breakdown, please put a teacup in the chat. So, yes. I feel like that's where their beef is stemming from. 
from, you know, Brooklyn Nicole and Johanna. Okay, so somebody said John Moran is a Leo. Well, shout out to him. Shout out to my Leo brother. I'm a Leo. I'm here for it. Okay, so then let's go back to this. So that, that was towards John Moran. I think a lot of dudes missed that. But y'all want to say Drake wasn't giving us bars. Shit. <laughs> he was giving me bars, damn it. He was spilling all types of tea. I was here for it. Okay, so now, uh, let's see here. Did that part. Oh, oh, I love this part. I don't care what Cole think. That dot shit was weak as fuck. Champagne tripping. He's not fucking easing up. Nigga calling Top to see if Top want to piece it up. Top want to piece it up. Top want to piece it up. Nah, pussy. Now you on your own when you speaking up. You done wrote this deep. You not fucking deep enough. What? So basically saying, Jermaine, shut the hell up with that stupid ass stunt that you pulled last week. Talking about your chakras is off and shit. This is hip hop, okay? And if you can't, you can't keep saying that you're the best and nobody wants to test you and everybody's scared of you because you're around, you know, because you, you're just so hard at rhyming. And then when Kendrick calls you out, you drop seven minute drill and then you come back with an apology a few days later. But he was just, you know, basically doing what he said he was going to do. I might delete this later. He knew he was going to delete that shit and apologize. So at this point, that is why I'm just going to call him Jermaine. OK, I'm no longer calling him Jake Cole. I'm just going to call him Jermaine. Uh, Jermaine. That's it. So he said he doesn't care what Cole thinks. Cole can apologize and do all that sassy shit. He's standing on business. And he's saying, don't, you know what I'm saying? You calling top and you trying to have top, you know, piece some shit up. I don't want to piece nothing up because you really went there. You know what I'm saying? You, you really caught me out. He feels away, right? And I think the person who was trying to piece it up was probably J. Cole. I don't see Kendrick, you know, calling top and saying, hey, you know, uh, talk to Drake. I'm sure it was J. Cole that was trying to make them piece it up. And Drake is like, no, I don't want to piece up shit. Okay, I want all the smoke. So, um, then, oh yeah, then this is the part, I don't know if y'all caught this. Begging Kai Sinat, boy, you not fucking beating us. Numbers wise, I'm out of here. You not fucking creeping up. Money wise, I'm out of here. You not fucking sneaking up. Corn ball, your show money, merch money, feed to us. What? He's dissing Kanye West. He went at Kanye. If y'all remember, I did a whole stream about this. When Kanye got mad and he tried to like come at Kai Sinat, who could be his son, um, because Kai was like, yo, Kanye, you sent me these pants and they're just too damn big. And then Kanye was like, fuck you. You're making fun of my merch. How dare you? So that diss was towards Kanye because Kanye be throwing a lot of shots at Drake as well. That's all you are. Yeah, this did not fit me. Yeah. Okay, so Kai is just funny. I don't care. He's a funny kid. Um, so yeah, that part was for Kanye. So he definitely went at Kanye. Um, let's see. Then he goes on to basically near the end. Um, he says, what teaming up with all of y'all falling like dominoes, bros turning into hoes, dog. Like I ain't got enough of those. Look at Drake, just out here pimping hoes. I see you, you know what I'm saying? Baby mama porn star, you got all the IG girls. He's saying like all these dudes are turning into hoes. He got enough hoes on his dick, okay? We seen the damn dick pic leaks not too long ago. We see why they're on there, okay? Then he goes on to say, I can't wait to see how far you niggas get to reaching now. This is the closest thing you niggas gonna get to a feature now. He's saying he's done. No more Drake stimulus package. Fuck all y'all. Don't call him. Don't ask for no features. The, the, the stimulus package is closed. No more PPP loans, okay? None. None whatsoever. He's done with y'all. 
All these dudes, he did stuff for them. He put them on his records. He got them number one hits and everything else. And this is how they repay him. He has a right to fill away. No more Drake stimulus package. Fuck all y'all. That's what he's saying. Then he goes on to saying, uh, backpedal gang because a few of y'all been reaching out. Y'all drew the line. What the fuck we speaking about? Get, get your fucking head tapped. You niggas out here peeking out. Had a song for four years. Drop that shit or shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Either drop the diss track and quit talking about it behind the scenes in the industry. Because if y'all don't know, Joe Button has said something a while ago talking about, you know, K-Dot. You know, he has this fire diss track against Drake. He's waiting to pull it out of his arsenal. So Drake is like, you've had that shit for four years. Either let it go, either shit or get off the pot. Quit talking about you got this hard diss track. Either let it go or shut your mouth. Drake wants all the smoke, okay? Then he says, shut your mouth, nigga. It's me twice in the big three. I had to leave you out, fucking dumbass knuckle. Okay, so he's saying like, no, he is the B. He don't need you. He don't need Jermaine. He is the big three by himself. So I don't know like how so many of the guys were like, oh, it's mid. I don't think I really listened. Okay, I don't think I really listened and comprehend. Yeah, I just heard the shoe size line was like, this is whack. He's talking about his shoe size. But if you really listened to it and took your time, I think Drake had some bars. I loved it. I loved it. You know, maybe it's just us girls who liked it, but I don't care. I loved it. I thought he killed it. This is what hip hop is about. And he really could have like had his shine for the whole weekend. But then, you know, Officer Ricky, honey, he had to come running out. So we're going to also break down Ricky's diss track as well. Um, let's see here. Oh, we got some super chats. How many people got in here? on this good Sunday. Oh, we got quite a few people in here. All right, y'all, come on in, come on in. We got over 7,000 people in here. Yeah, I think he did his thing. Y'all can say, oh, it was his, uh, his ghost writer and all that, that's cute. But y'all was the same ones also screaming that it was AI. When it first came out, somebody was like, oh, that's not really him, it's AI. I'm like, no, that's Drake. Cause y'all know I love AI Drake, but I can tell the difference between AI Drake and regular Drake, that's Drake. And I'm not saying that the ghost writers didn't help or that he didn't have ghost writers. I'm not saying that. He might have. But I don't care. Ghost writer or not, there were bars in there. If you really understand hip hop and you understand like just all the beef and all the drama that's been going on over the past few years with all these folks, well, especially with Drake and um, K-Dot, then you get it. And But that Metro booming line, it was just so funny to me because Metro was literally, he literally has a vlog about drums. That will forever be funny to me. Like, Drake is so petty for that. Shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. Like, I don't care. That's just, that's funny. That's like such a bop. Um, so, yeah, I'm not saying I'm team Drake. What I'm saying is that I, I enjoyed it. Like, that's what it's about. Like, that's what, you know, we've been waiting for in hip hop. Like, it was a bop to me. I did. I really liked it. So, he did his research and he replied back. So let me go ahead and just read some of these super chats here. Um, FTH2013 says, hey, lovely T, this is my first super chat. I've been a tea sipper since you were, where's my girl T Fizzle? Loving the look, keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming through. Uh, Iron Roll Sim 5 says, hey T, dropped in real quick, but I'm out the door. Thanks for being you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Crystal Bird. Says you look beautiful. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Uh, Ryan Keith uh, says, hold on. Says, uh, main reason is because Drake, damn, are always been women. I don't know one dude riding around bumping Drake. Okay, I think you have like a lot of spell check errors, but it's all good. Um, so I think you're saying, okay, the main reason is because Drake's fans have always been women. I mean, that might be true too. He does have a big female fan base, but he still had bars in there. He still had bars. He still addressed a lot of stuff. So I still enjoyed it, but I think, I don't know. I just feel like when I talk to like all my homegirls, they all liked it. When I talk to the guys, they're like, it's mid. So I don't know. 
Maybe the guys are just hating. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see here. Trixie says, hey, T, happy Sunday. You're cute, Agent Backwards. Thanks for bringing us the heat. We appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Um, let's see here. Ranger says, you know, I can't constrict right now. You know, I can't concentrate. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all using, uh, y'all are using voice chats. I can't concentrate right now, T. You know that. Sorry, I'm listening to the words, damn it. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Y'all got me over here flubbing my words and stuff. Um, listen here, Big Booty Jersey. What's up, sis? She sent fifty dollars. Sis, hey T, looking beautiful, queen. We cutting up in the French Quarter Festival. I'll catch you on the playback. I'm eating my crawfish and drinking beer and smoking weed. Oh, y'all are turning up in New Orleans. In uh, in New Orleans. That's what's up. I didn't know about the French Quarter Festival. Let's see here. Um. Rangers said five. He says, T, you can't forget Michael Jackson named his son Prince. Mike is the king of pop. Prince is the son of the king. Oh, that's a good viewpoint. That's good, too. I didn't even think about that. His son, Prince Michael. Mm. So that was kind of like a double entendre then. So maybe he meant, meant it in both ways. So thank you for that. Uh, let's see here. Lorraine says, there, T, this breakdown is awesome. Where did you get that top? Um, what did I get this? Poppy like Forever 21 <laughs> online. <laughs> Y'all know I don't be at the most expensive places. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just something cute. Poppy costs like $10, child. I think like Forever 21. You know, I love me some purple. Let's see here. Um... Uh, Ayana Lachey sent 9.99 says T. I'm loving this lyric breakdown. My boyfriend and I are here for the rap. This is we were still confused on the J Cole apology on Seven Minute Drill removed because P I Kendrick's diss is still on his album. Mmm. Thank you, sis. I'm glad y'all are liking the breakdown. Yeah, J Cole just he he lost me with that. I don't care what anybody says. And you guys know I'm a huge J Cole fan. But yeah, I'm, I'm, no, absolutely not. Like it's hip hop. Again, Kendrick Cole and Drake, they're not going to be out here, you know, blasting at each other. This was just supposed to stay on wax. And I just think Cole just took it just way too hard, like way, way too hard. So thank you. Let's see here. Um, Miss Mel sent five says the wax put out my drink when you said, hey, love you, T. Thanks for keeping my spirits up. I'm going through it right now. Oh, I hope this stream makes you feel better. Thank you for coming through, sis. Um, you know, I love my Canadians and they're, hey. <laughs> oh, snaps, money bag mom must be in the building because I'm seeing all these money bags. Oh my gosh. All right. Let me keep reading. I know she's in the building. Uh, Camille H sent five says, because Diddy likes to party and you got to tell him no. Yes. I really think that line is about him not wanting to blast Rick Ross and Diddy. So we'll have to wait and see. Definitely have to wait and see. Let's see here. Uh, Kai D says, Drake is such a messy wannabe. Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, hold on. I got a few more. Let's see here. The Biz 95 says, this live stream is everything. I didn't know I needed a lovely T reaction slash breakdown video. You got to do these more often. You look beautiful as always. Thank you so much. So if y'all like these, I can do some more. You know, maybe I will start talking more about like hip hop, hip hop beefs and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I have fun. Like I keep up with all this stuff. I just don't make videos on it. You know what I mean? I figure that's like DJ Academics lane. But if y'all want me to start doing more of these and stuff like that, I have no problem. I'm having fun. Hope you guys are having fun as well. So thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Moonlight Sim 499 says, Long time tea sipper. Any idea when the Discord will be open again? Love you, tea. It probably won't be open for like another two months. We only open it like every three months. So, but I'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. So thank you. Um, let's see here. Austin says, shit, I'll give up 50% to have enough worth of 85 million like K dot. Mmm. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. Uh, Shades of DeGray 
1999 says, as far as rap, we team Drake today, maybe not tomorrow. Exactly. I just have to give it to him. I really do. I'm sorry. I felt like he killed it. He addressed a lot of stuff head up and the bars were witty and funny to me. So I, I enjoyed it. Let's see here. Sana Cruz says, T's voice on an intro, no more Drake stimulus. Yes. Drake, you, you're free to use my voice. No more Drake stimulus package. Let their asses know, ain't no more features, ain't none of that shit. The Drake stimulus package PPP loans is closed, okay? Tell them. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, let's see here, Moneybag Mo sent $499.99. Thank you so much, Mo. Mo is like the number one tea sipper, I swear. I appreciate you so much. Every time I go live, she just shows so much love. Y'all all do. I, I just, I appreciate it so much. Cause like I said, I be in other people's lives, honey. They be live for like four or five hours and get, you know, just a few dollars. So the fact that I'm only live for under two hours and you guys just send super chats and really show me a lot of support, it means a lot to me. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mo. Appreciate you, sis. Um, let's see here. Uh, Kaylee Cole says, Drake befriend befriending Sexy Red makes sense now. It does, because it seems like all the guys are not feeling Drake. They definitely have it in for him right now. So it makes sense that he's trying to be more cool with the females. Um, Quali Sugar Sim 5 says, MJ and Prince be like, why am I in it every time there's a rap diss? <laughs> Man, yeah, that line was funny, though. They both, they both went hard in both their lines, K-Dot and Drake. So I like how they responded back to each other. Uh, let's see here. Nay sent 20 says, T, I'm loving the lyrical breakdown. We need more beef classic rap songs with a breakdown. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I got y'all. I'm glad you guys are liking it. So thank you. Brooklyn Diana sent $2.49 in franc money. I recognize the sign from when I took French class. She says, love from France, um, mon ami, beaucoup. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, merci beaucoup. So shout out to my people in France that are watching right now. That's awesome. All right, so let's see here. Um, so let's get on to Ricky, to Officer Ricky. Let's see, um, I'm on some gloss child. That's one thing I hate about matte lipstick. It like starts to like cake up. So. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to, I just, I hate when it starts to like cake up. That's the only thing I hate about matte. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up this Officer Ricky, <laughs> Rick Ross. <laughs> Why am I calling him Officer Ricky, child? I done bought it back to 2009 and shit, 2008. Think I have his okay. Mm. So this song is called Champagne Moments. Let me share my screen here. Now he starts off by talking about fish tanks and you know marble floors, because he has to remind everybody how rich he is, you know. And that's how he gets down. Um, so he says here. Crack smoke is the exhaust for my pen and pad. Ghost writers, they get to floss what you could have had. Record labels taking loss. Are you in? Are you in your bag? You a worker wanting to chart. Don't make me laugh. So in this part, he's saying the obvious. He's basically saying that, you know, Drake has ghost writers. Like he's saying like, you know, this is how he's able to like blow up and, you know, his rhymes it's all because of his ghostwriters so to me that's not really a diss like meek mill talked about this years ago so nice try let's see here then he goes on to say get to mine tell by my watch it's a different time living fine i'm getting high as your shit declines who believes he's moving keys in his louis v's run up on you and snatch your chain watch you bitches bleed Okay, so let's break that down. He's saying that Drake is declining. And I've been saying this for a while. This is not the Drake of like 2015, 2016. Like when I lived in LA, like Drake was everything around that time. You know what I mean? Like you heard Drake's music all the time. And I'm not saying like For Your Dogs was bad, but it's just, it, it just didn't hit like a lot of his prior albums, right? 
And so I've been saying this for a long time that Drake is declining a bit. And it's okay. He's been in the game like fucking 20 years or some shit. I don't know. So Rick Ross is saying the same thing. Then he's talking about the chain thing. Run up on you, snatch your chain, and watch you bitches bleed. Feel the plane just describe when you really ride. Either you niggas getting money or you ready to die. Okay. This part about chains is very interesting because again, it's referencing Kendrick Lamar's track when Kendrick Lamar said that, you know, he'll basically snatch his chain, you know what I'm saying? And make their tattoos bleed. So he's referencing Kendrick Lamar, but my thing is this. Y'all know we bring receipts around here. Ricky, you may not want to talk about chains, okay? Because I do recall at the BT Awards in 2012, your homeboy got jumped. Remember uh, <laughs> your highness gunplay? <laughs> Who remembers when gunplay got jumped by um, G-Unit? They whooped his ass and took his chain. And remember, gunplay's chain went on a, on a world tour. That, that chain went all around the country. They had more tours with that chain than gunplay ever had. Put a teacup if y'all remember when gunplay got jumped and they took his chain. Do y'all remember that? Some of y'all were young. Yes, Gunplay. I'm not saying that Gunplay is Rick Ross, but I'm saying Gunplay was a part of MMG. So you really can't be talking about, you know, chains getting snatched when this was your crew a few years ago. Let me go ahead and pull up these. Y'all remember this when 50 Cent's messy ass wore the chain and went bowling? <laughs> this is why I love rap beefs. I'll be here for all this shit because I, I, I don't forget anything. Remember that. They jumped him and then 50 Cent was at Lucky Stripes in LA disrespectfully wearing gun chains, MMG chain. It doesn't matter if it wasn't Rick Ross's. Again, Rick Ross, gunplay, it was the whole MMG camp. So to me, it's kind of hypocritical. Your boy's chain got snatched. Rick Ross never got it back. So I would leave lines about chains alone. I'm just saying. Even if it wasn't Rick Ross's chain, it was still gunplays. And this happened at the BET Awards. So in case y'all forgot, I had to refresh y'all's memory. So now, ooh, hold on. Let's go back to the lyrics. Back to this tab. What happened to my other tab? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't tell me it disappeared. Okay. So then he goes on to say this. Okay, feel the pain you just described when you really, when you really ride. Either you niggas getting money or you ready to die. B.I.G. don't give a fuck, you Chi Ali. You got it, keep it tucked if you got it. Hold on. You got to keep it tucked if you be by me. Do the job, better known as Charles Swab. Double R spread through the yard, I swear to God. So he's talking about, you know, his Rolls Royces and all that stuff. Um, you know, again, talking about keeping your chain tucked in, even though, you know, his people's chain was took. Okay. So then he goes on to say this. Niggas leaking records when they speak when we speaking directly. If we keeping it gangster when you see me, check me. White boy, I see you, I see you, yeah, check. I liked that part. That part was hard. I agree with Rick Ross on this part. Drake is always claiming somebody's leaking his shit. Everybody don't have access to your studio. I feel like Drake leaks a lot of his music and then he tries to play crazy like, oh, oh it's me. My latest song got leaked. But y'all can go ahead and stream it right now. I think Drake does a lot of stuff for attention. So I do agree with that part that at the end of the day, um, Drake do be leaking his own stuff. Even this diss track was a supposed leak. And even The Weeknd said in his singing diss to Drake that the Drake leaks a lot of his music. And so Rick Ross is basically, you know, co-signing what The Weeknd said. 
And he's saying, like, with us, we're addressing you directly. We're not saying, oh, this was a leak. This didn't mean to be put out. We're saying your name directly. When Kendrick has something to say, he's saying it directly. So I understand what Rick Ross is saying in that part. Um, then he proceeds to call him a white boy. We're going to talk about that whole situation in a moment because I really didn't like that. But we'll, we'll talk about that moving forward. Um... I'm mad like my other screen just like disappeared. Hold on. Oh, hold up. Is it gonna come up or no? Google Chrome been acting hella funny. Can we open this up? Why is this not opening up? Let me see if I can open up in a different window. Basically my receipts window disappeared and I'm trying to see if it'll come back up. I don't know what the hell. To come up behind this no it didn't okay because i was trying to show something else but it's like the the window don't want to come up and i don't know why yeah i don't know okay let's go on with the thing so then he goes um getting bullied don't walk up on me because this clip is fully niggas pussy don't want to push me i'm like really woody like the moves, but he never had to fight in school. I was ran. Another nigga had to write your grooves. Flow is copy and paste. Wheezy gave you the juice, okay? Bars. I like that part. And he's basically saying, like, you know, don't walk up to me thinking you about to be on your bully shit. Because I keep my clip and my clip is, you know, it's full. It's full of bullets and stuff. So <laughs> watch yourself. Then he goes on to say that basically, you know, Drake is pussy. He's always had to have other dudes write his rhymes, you know, again, alluding to the whole ghostwriter thing. Then he says that when he was in school, he never had to fight. He always was the one running. He had other people fighting for him, okay? It's basically what he's saying. He's also saying that his flow is copy and paste and saying that basically when Drake came out, he basically copied Wheezy's cadence, Wheezy's flow and everything else. And in certain songs, you do hear, you know, that, Little Wayne influence, but you know, he's also changed it up. Drake has copied a lot of people's flows and styles. Remember, that was where his beef came with XXX when he took XXX whole flow and then he tried to play it off and act like he didn't when he did. So, Drake has been known for doing that. So, I, I do like that he said that. Then he goes on to say, Another white boy at the park wanting to hang with the crew, Paul Tier Prize winner switching up like dyed denim. Get incentives for all the killings while we ride in rentals. Look me right in my face. He begins to shake. Told you niggas stay scheming. I predicted my fate. Got more money than you. Fuck you want me to say. 50 mil for the crib where you want me to stay. So in that part, he's saying that he has more money than Drake. I'm not buying that. Rick Ross does have a lot of money. I'm not going to take that from Rick. He does have a lot of money. He has lots of acres and cows and all that stuff. But I don't think he has more money than Drake. Drake is one of the most highest paid rappers ever. Okay? Drake is damn near a billionaire. Let's keep that real. Um, then he's also saying that basically, you know, once again, calling him a white boy, saying he's the white boy at the park who wants to hang with the crew. Everybody knows in every hood there's always that white boy. He runs with all the Negroes, you know what I'm saying? He's at the park hooping, you know, he had more black than the, the, the blackest guy in the crew. So he's saying that that's Drake. Drake is a white boy who wants to hang with all the niggas, basically, right? Um, then he goes on to say, I can shoot up the block. I got pictures to paint. I let you DM my hoe, but you got bitches, but got bitches that you can't. Meaning there is like a girl, again, Drake is always tied to some beef with taking somebody's girlfriend or messing with somebody's chick. So Drake was seen with one of um, Rick Ross's old girls. So I guess Rick Ross is feeling away. So he's like, I don't care. You can DM her, you can smash her, you can do whatever. But I got bitches that you can't. So he's saying that he got bitches on lock that Drake will never, ever, ever be able to pull. You keep on thinking that, Officer Ricky. I'm just saying, okay? Drake, Rick Ross. I, I think a lot of your Instagram girls would probably go with Drake, but what do I know, okay? Um, then he goes on to say this. Um, 
I'm not gonna read his chorus. Uh, he says, niggas leaking their records. Oh no, hold up, how did we go back up here? Oh, that's part of the chorus, okay. Okay, so this is the outro. This is the part that's causing the most controversy, is the outro, right? So on the outro, uh, he says, by the way, I got a lot of respect for a lot of rappers. So he's playing the snippet of Drake giving Rick Ross props. And Rick Ro and Drake is saying this to Rick Ross on stage. He's saying, by the way, I got a lot of respect for a lot of rappers, but I got one guy, he's my favorite person to rap with on any song. His name is Rick Ross. So basically, Drake is being nice. He's giving Rick Ross his flowers. And my thing is, I don't really think that that's really a diss to use that because at some point in time, all of these weird ass, two-faced, sassy men, because all of this is sassy behavior. Let's just keep it real, okay? This is what females do. Bitches will be in your face, you know, beg to be your friend, and then, you know, flip on you and, and switch up on you and shit like that. So we can all find clips of these rappers giving each other props. We can find clips of Future, you know what I'm saying, praising Drake and vice versa. We can find clips of Rick Ross giving Drake his props and vice versa. Hell, we can even find clips of Kendrick Lamar giving Drake props before they started beefing back in like 2015 or whatever, giving Drake props, okay? So they can all do that, you know what I mean? So I wasn't really impressed by hearing that because they've all given each other props. So that's kind of fake to now clown and be like, oh, you were giving me props and saying that I was your favorite because you were at that time. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then um, he goes on to say, you ain't never want to be a nigga anyways, nigga. That's why you had an operation to make your nose smaller than your father's nose, nigga. I unfollowed you, nigga, cause you sent the motherfucking cease and desist to French Montana, nigga. You sent the police, nigga, hating on my dog's project. That wasn't the same white boy that I seen, nigga, when we was making them early records, nigga. Well, I'm confused. If he's a white boy, why so many N-words? Why do you keep calling him nigga if he's a white boy? I'm just saying, I've never said nigga more times in my life on stream than me repeating your lyrics. If he's a white boy, why well, keep calling him a nigga? That's all I'm saying. Um, then he says, okay, now let's talk about the French Montana thing. So I'm really mad at like this thing is not coming up. Hold on, let me see if I can pull up a new window. Let's see if it comes up. So the whole French Montana thing is this. He's saying that Drake basically was on some police shit because he sent a cease and desist because there was supposedly a song they had all worked on and Metro Boomin had produced it and they were gonna release it. And, um, you know, I guess, I don't really know why Drake and Metro are beefing. That really hasn't been stated. But supposedly Drake sent a cease and desist because he felt like even if it is French Montana's song, you're not about to make money off of me. My lyrics are on here. I'm on this song. I don't fool with Metro Boomin. No. So he sent a cease and desist. And so French wasn't able to, you know, to use the record. Now, I don't know if this particular, because they said it was like two different songs, so I'm not sure. So I don't know if this particular song was an older song or a song that was supposed to be on Mac and Cheese 5. Now, my issue with Mac and Cheese 5 and... A lot of people have been dragging French Montana for his Mac and Cheese 5 debacle. This idiot literally, like, he dropped six versions of Mac and Cheese. So when you log down to, like, Spotify, Apple Music, it was just like, what is this? Everything was, like, French Montana. So he would have, like, one song, and then he would have, like, it in, like, six different versions. Chopped and screwed. Sped up. Uh, acapella, instrumental, sign language, French, Spanish, German, of like the same song. So maybe Drake just didn't want to like entertain it or have himself involved in anything French Montana was doing with Mac and Cheese 5 or Macaroni and Cheese, whatever it's called. That the, the I know a lot of people like, like the other albums, but 5 to me, I haven't heard a lot of people say that they liked it. It seemed like a lot of people were like more annoyed by that album than really were receptive to it. I'm just saying. Yeah, he was trying hard to get on the charts. 
It's like, damn, there's a sign language version of mac and cheese five. <laughs> I'm messing. No, there's not. I'm just being funny, y'all. But it was just too many. It was like, come on, we don't need this many versions of anything that French Montana does. Seriously. So I don't know if maybe that was the issue for Drake is the fact that, you know, Mr. Mac and Cheese was doing way too much. Let me see if I can find, cause my damn receipts just like literally disappeared. I'm trying to see if I can pull it up so I can show y'all. Open that tab up. Okay. Okay. Let me show y'all, for y'all who don't know. This, it, to me, was just ridiculous. And they got the nerve to bring Taylor Swift into his mess. Tell me he was inspired with the 126 songs for Mac and Cheese 5 remix. Like, it was just, it was insane, like, how many versions they were of this song. And so a lot of people like just really, really annoyed by it, by how many like just versions of it that he had. So like I said, I don't know if the song was supposed to be for this particular album. I don't know, but it seemed like Drake didn't want any parts of it. So let me go back here. So then he goes on to say this. So that's basically why he unfollowed him was because of the whole thing with French Montana. Then he says, that wasn't the same white boy that I seen, nigga, when we was making them early records, nigga, when you was happy to be around niggas, seeing niggas holding them sticks, yeah, you old motherfucking stun of your life, nigga. Give Wheezy some more money, nigga. Give rap a lot more money, nigga. White boy, yeah, the biggest. It's Rosé, nigga. We can't do it how you want to do it, where you want to do it, anytime you want to do it. I'm ready. I'm ready, white boy. Uh, I know you got your dockers on with no underwear, white boy. Now that was, pause. <laughs> then he says, you had surgery, that six pack gone. That's why you wearing that funny shit at your show. You can't hide it, nigga, white boy. So that was Rick Ross's breakdown. And you know, Rick Ross had a few bars in there that I did like, but I felt like a lot of it was like ad hominem attacks, you know, like all of a sudden now he's a white boy. But my issue is this, was he a white boy when you were enjoying that stimulus package? I'm just saying, like, was he a white boy then? Because if he was just a white boy and a cornball, then why keep doing features with him? Why keep connecting with him? Uh, so I thought that was kind of weird that he just kept saying that over and over. Um, then he wants to get on like, you know, him having surgery and the six pack and his nose done. And again, I do, I don't, I don't know if, if Drake has got his nose done. Um, because again, it could be the fact that he's aging, but his nose did look a lot bigger. I will say that his nose looked a lot bigger than, than what it looks like now. And so right now he's still calling out Drake. So I want to go ahead and try and pull up um, these clips here because he's still going in on Drake. He's still mad about some stuff. Let me see. Oh, looks like Drake responded back too. Okay, so yeah, this beef is still going on. Okay, so let me share this. Because he's still making fun of Drake's nose. Okay. So I don't know. The nose looks a little bit different, but it could be aging. I, you know, I'm not really sure. I don't know. But he's saying the bridge of your nose got smaller, BBL Drizzy. And BBL Drizzy, you know, has been trending all day on Twitter. So that's funny. Rick Ross does have that trending. 
He's also saying um, Drake's nose then versus now. So he could have got a nose job. Then he goes on to say this. I might write a song that they call Who Knows? Who Knows? One thing about, um, I'm going to say this. You niggas with them BBLs, you niggas. I'm speaking specifically to you niggas with BBLs. If you got a fake body, you got a fake mind, nigga. Leave that shit to them cute bitches walking around in YSL heels. Not you bitch niggas in OVO. The pastrami posse. Back to the luxury. All right, so Rick is still on him. Uh, let me see. Okay, and then there was a conversation between Drake and his mom, supposedly. So basically, he posts a text message and it says this. Obs, the internet is saying that you got a nose job. You look the same to me in the kitchen today. I can't believe you would get one without me because you know I always wanted one. Don't tell me that you got tattoos without me and now this too. <laughs> That's my impression of Drake's mom's voice, Chad. Oh no. So then Drake says, I would have got us a two for one if I went ma. It's coming from Rick Ross, the guy I did a song with. He's gone loopy off of the Manjaro and hasn't eaten in days. <laughs> And it's turned him into an angry racist. He's performing at proms for money. It's bad. Don't worry. We'll handle it. So that was a funny response. But let me keep it real with y'all. Y'all know damn well that was Drake texting himself. I don't believe that his mama wrote that. I think that was Drake texting from her phone to himself. I don't know. That's the vibe I'm getting. I'm getting when I, when I feel it and I'm reading it, I'm getting Drake. <laughs> Drake talking to Drake. <laughs> But it was still funny. He said Rick Ross is on Manjaro and, you know, he's he's going through it right now. Let's see. Then. Okay, so this is the latest here. Let me share this tab. So he's asking Uma Thurman. He's saying, do you need this? Because he had posted in his story the other day that he felt like Kill Bill because everybody was coming at him. So he posted that the other day. Um, let's see. <laughs> Rick Ross is an idiot. He says, think it will fit me. So now at this point, they're just trolling each other. Okay. So that's the latest on that. So yeah, this, this whole beef like I said, it's funny. I'm here for it. I hope it just, you know, it continues to stay on wax and nothing more, nothing less. Let me come back on the screen here. So, well, how long have I been out here? An hour and 19 minutes. Y'all, please hit the like button if y'all are liking this stream. If you guys have enjoyed it, please, please, please hit the like button. Um, So that way we can go ahead and get the likes up. But yeah, no, the whole thing is funny. So it's going to be interesting to see if Uma ends up getting into this and says something, but I don't know. I just find the whole situation crazy with, with them. I'm glad that, like I said, I'm here for it. This is what hip hop is about. So I'm glad that, you know, Drake said what he had to say. Rick Ross, you know, came back. He said what he had to say. You know, as long as it stays on wax, I'm cool. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. This is what hip hop is about. It's not about trying to be friends with everybody and, you know, kumbaya iron. It's about who's really the best. So now... I'm excited to see what K Dot has to say. I'm excited for him to come back um, with his rhyme. I'm excited to see if Future comes back. I don't think lyrically Future can can eat either one of them. Um, can eat Drake, but it's still gonna be interesting to see if he comes back with anything. I wonder if Metro Boomin is gonna say anything back. Um, but yeah, this whole situation has just been very very interesting. I'm gonna read these last um, super chats here. Let's see. Uh, J uh, Jazz Sim 499 says Drake is like Thanos against the Avengers, the other rappers. Yes, I've seen that meme. That meme is so funny. I think I, I posted it, matter of fact. Hold on. Let me see. 
Let me see. I posted on my Instagram. If y'all haven't seen this meme yet, I had posted it earlier. Let me share my screen. I have a few memes I'll be posting about Drake Child. This one. Whoever did this, I love this. Whoever made this meme, I thought that was really, really dope. So, yeah. He's definitely fighting for his life here in hip hop. But yeah, let me say this before I go to. Um, let me see here. TJ says, no Diddy, no Diddy, LOL. Thank you, TJ, for the super chat. T Baby sent 1999 says, Nikki does that as well. She tries to make jabs at biracials like Lotto, Jennifer, um, her husband's victim, and calls them white but was cool with 6 9 who is nef who is nefarious for saying nigga okay t baby thank you for the super chat yeah it's it's very interesting let let's talk about that really quick about the whole thing with Rick Ross and Drake now this is my issue with him going in and calling him a white boy as like a diss because i feel like again he wasn't a white boy when you were featured on tracks with him, when you was getting money with him. It's like everything was all good. And now all of a sudden, it's an issue for you. And I just, I don't know, I just felt like that was kind of weird. And another thing, remember, who remembers what I said in my last stream? Um, This was like a week ago, right? Put a ticket up if y'all remember me telling you that I feel like this issue with Drake is a lot bigger. The industry is dying right hip-hop is not making the money that they were once making let's keep that real and it's very interesting that in his lyrics he's saying give jay prince more money give wheezy more money give stunner more money and you know rick ross and stunner they had a whole beef they're not even cool so for him to say give stunner more money that says a lot that a lot of people are struggling in the industry right now and they're seeing this biracial man this half jewish man he really wants to call him he really wants to call it the fact that Drake is Jewish, but he's not going to go there. He's getting all this money. Drake owns his masters. I think uh, Universal paid him like $500 million. Drake gets money. They put money into his concerts. When he goes and does concerts, they sell out. Drake is making money as a rapper. He's making money hand over fist that other rappers are not making. So commercially, he is seen as the face of hip hop rap. So, and I think it bothers a lot of these black rappers, these full black rappers who are from Atlanta, Florida, Cali, New York, that the face of hip hop is now a biracial male from Canada. I said this a week ago and I'm glad I see the teacups. I'm glad y'all remember what I said. I said, that's really the issue that I'm feeling. And Rick Ross is basically confirming what I've been feeling. The fact that he keeps calling him a white boy and saying that you need to pay these black men more money. So I really think that's what it boils down to is that he's really upset that, and not just Rick, of course, but all of them are upset that Drake is the face of hip hop. And people can say, oh, he's whack, or he's, you know, they can say whatever they wanna say, but Drake sells. Drake has hits. Drake has a big white fan base. Why? Because Drake can play both sides. He's a biracial. So he's not as threatening as some of the black rappers. White kids see themselves in Drake. Black kids see themselves in Drake. Asian kids, Latino kids, because of because he's ambiguous. Not saying like his looks or his features. He definitely doesn't have ambiguous features, but he can kind of play in those different roles, right? Rick Ross is a big fat black man. The people who can see themselves in Rick Ross or other big fat black men. I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm just saying, a, a, a little white boy is not gonna see themselves in Rick Ross, but they can potentially see themselves in Drake. Yeah, I get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to even be disrespectful when I say that. So that's how Drake has more of a reach. <laughs> Somebody say Rick Ross is ginormous. Y'all need to stop, he's on Monjaro, you know? And then the fact that he keeps body shaming him and saying, oh, you got your abs done. You got your nose done. Rick Ross, 
you're the last person that needs to be body shaming anybody, okay? And I love Rick Ross's music. He needs to stop with the body shaming, you know, because, again, he needs to simmer down with that. You know, has has Drake gotten work done? I absolutely believe it. I do believe that he got abs, abs sketching. Meg Thee Stallion was one of the ones who called him out. So he had a BBL. <laughs> You know, Drake's butt is, you know, his his he's thick back there. I don't know if it's from a BBL, but you know, Drake definitely don't got no flat ass. You know, his his booty be poking a little bit. So, you know, maybe he did get a BBL. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think that's what a lot of the issue is. Is that Drake is able to move into certain spaces that these full black artists cannot move into. And welcome to our world as black women. I, I don't feel bad for them because we go through this as black women biracial women can play black or they can play biracial and light skin me as a dark-skinned woman i can never play a biracial i can never play a light-skinned woman i can only play a, a dark-skinned black woman so it's the same thing so drake is able to maneuver and it's very interesting that these same men will sit there and call drake a white boy but then will fight tooth and nail to say that women like sweetie and doja cat and amber rose who are all biracials are black oh my beautiful black queen no lotto's not a beautiful black queen she's a biracial queen and that's okay doja's biracial and that's okay sweetie is biracial she's half asian and that's okay her is biracial and that's okay i spice is i don't know she claims she's nigerian and dominican okay biracial so it's very interesting that when it comes to women, these same women who have the features that they covet and they love and that they date, they're black. And if you say they're not black, you're just a you're just a hating ass dark skinned blackie. But now with Drake, everybody's supposed to call him a white boy. Ah, the, Drake is the living embodiment of the children that y'all produce. Most of these men who are out here talking mess have biracial children and that's okay. I made a joke last week that the NBA is now called the National Biracial Association because all the men on the NBA are biracial. So I, I, I don't respect it, I don't respect it. Yes, y'all, they said clock it T. Yeah, I don't respect it. Like I, I get what he's trying to say, but was he a white boy when he was giving you your number one hits? Was he a white boy when y'all was torn with him and, you know, he was helping, you know, giving y'all the stimulus package? No, a lot of y'all benefited from his biracial attributes. A lot of y'all were able to get into these spaces and make more money being next to this biracial. So if he was using you for street cred, y'all were also using him. Yes, her is half, her is half Asian. She's a dark skinned biracial. Her is half Filipino. So that's all I'm saying. If, if he's using them for street cred and, you know, I, I'm with all these black dudes and we're hard and da-da-da, they were also using him to get into more commercial spaces. Let's keep it real. But y'all not ready for that conversation, child. So that's what I'm saying. Like, he, he put a lot of them on. And so it's very interesting that <clears throat> when we talk about the biracial debate, um... It's always okay for the women to be considered black by a lot of these guys. But now they all want to clown Drake and, you know, now he's a white boy. Well, if he's a white boy, then Lotto's a white girl. If he's a white boy, then, you know, Doja Cat's a white girl and, you know, whoever is a white girl. No, they're not. They're not black. They're not white. They're biracial and that's okay. It's okay to claim both. There's nothing wrong with that. So... Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just found it funny. I found it funny. So I'm going to read these last few super chats. I'm going to get up out of here. Um, we have over 8,000 people in here. Thank y'all for joining me on this Sunday. It's very impromptu, but I've had a really good time on this stream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. J. Cole, too. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's not forget J. Cole. That's why I really felt, too, like they were coming at both of them initially, you know, when K-Dot released his, um, his track. Because J. Cole's also biracial. People forget that. They think just because he has dreadlocks, he's just a light-skinned black man. No, J. Cole has a white mother. 
And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. But let, let's, 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 let's say what people are. And I just feel like it's very interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, when a lot of these men, they go the colorist angle and they don't get caught out for it. But if it was a female going the colorist angle, they'd be drugged. Just, just keep it about the music. Keep it about what he did. I don't want to hear all that white boy talk. Because if he's white, then half the women that you mess with Rick Ross are white too. I'm just saying. Y'all not ready for that conversation. Yes, Cole is biracial. Jermaine is biracial and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying all this to put anybody down or to make fun of biracial people. No, if you're half and half, you're half and half. I don't claim biracials. I let them be biracial. I don't think biracial people are just black or just white. They are biracial. That's it, that's all. But let's also be honest that a lot of biracial people, they're able to play in different worlds, especially depending on their features. Now, J. Cole looks more black phenotypically. Some of us just look at him as, you know, just a light-skinned black dude, but he's biracial. But then you have some biracials like Logic who look more white. And they go in on him all the time because he looks more white. So with Logic, he has a very huge white fan base. He's able to play both worlds. And that's the same with Drake. So I think a lot of them were able to benefit from the Drake stimulus package because they know that Drake has that, you know, that, that shortcut to like the white fan bases and the white folks, they're going to come to the concerts, they're going to buy the music. So a lot of them benefited from this. And now he wants to complain. I find that very, very disingenuous and fake, but that's just my opinion. Oh yeah, Hosley, yeah. Yeah, I, I like Hosley. She's white passing too, she's biracial. Yeah, everybody thinks Logic is white, but Logic is biracial. His daddy's real light skin, and then his mama's white. But he was raised in the hood, you know what I'm saying? All his brothers are hood boogers. Now he just acts like, <laughs> like, like an old white man now, but yeah, Logic got a little bit of black in him. Mm-hmm. And I love Logic. I'm, I'm a big Logic fan. Y'all know that. I love his music. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, Tynina sent $10. Says, T, this is my first super chat. As, an emo as a mature and emotionally intelligent adult, I feel like if one deep conversation over a bikini wax and pedicure could cure all the hostility between these two. Mm. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. Appreciate you. Uh, Melanin Queen, what's up, sis? She says, RR, Rick Ross looks like a pile of mud <laughs> and a snail had a baby. Body built like stackable washers with no talent, probably on them tapes. Damn! <laughs> Y'all have no chill whatsoever. She said he popped out them damn tapes with Diddy. He looks like a stackable washer and dryer. Oh my gosh, y'all are a mess. Y'all are in here dragging him. Yeah, I, I just didn't agree with the body shaming. I do feel like Drake has gotten some work done because you know, the industry makes you insecure. So, you know, whatever. But Rick Ross, he really, yeah, bears, Mr. Pear. He don't need to be talking about nobody's body, nobody's abs, none of that. And he shouldn't be talking about nobody being police either. Let's see here. Um, Dane D sent 199. Says 24 has been an amazing year for the tea, honey. Yes, it has. I, I've, I've been enjoying 2024. They said this is the year of exposure and things are being exposed. I'm definitely here for it. Uh, let's see here. Sierra Brown sent 1999. Says why Nino Brown just posted a clip of Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith kissing at Coachella. I seen that. I, I don't know what that was about. Jaden like ran up on Justin and was like kind of humping him. And then like they kissed on the cheek. I don't know, child. I'm gonna just mind my black ass business on that one. Uh, Forever Your Leo, what's up, sis? Says, was late, but I wanted to show you some love on this beautiful Sunday. Definitely, thank you so much. Uh, Jillian, hey sis, she said 20 says, you look gorgeous today, happy Sunday tea. Thank you so much, Jillian. I can't wait to see you in Puerto Rico. I seen that you signed up. So 
We're going to have a ball. I will see you in a few months in Puerto Rico. We're going to turn up for sure. But yeah, so it's a lot going on. This was fun. I had a good time. Um, you know, I never stream on a Sunday, so this was definitely different. We got a lot of people that came today. Please hit the like button, you guys. If you guys enjoyed this stream, please, please, please hit the like button. I definitely had fun going over the lyrics, but... You know, I have to keep it real out of both of them. I'm glad that Rick Ross responded, though. Rick Ross responded within two hours. So props to him for bringing it back to what hip-hop is. Hip-hop is competition. It's about, you know, real bars, people, you know, going at each other, giving their opinion. That's why I never understood why people would get mad at the girls. Like, oh, all the females need to just come together. Female unity, shut the fuck up. Half y'all don't even get along with y'all's coworkers. But y'all want all these rap girls to get along? No. Let them rap. Let them spit their bars. Let them pop their shit. This is not R&B. This is not country. This is hip hop. You know, so for so long, the girls have been the ones, you know, calling each other out and saying, I'm the best and my titties are the best and my coochie is the wettest and all that goofy shit. So it feels good because so long people are like, oh, they look at the men. All the men get along. The girls are catty. All y'all bitches do is fight. And now we're seeing that the men don't get along either. They be caddy behind the scenes. They just know how to play it off. Men know how to get a bag together. Like, I really don't like you, but we're going to get this bag. Females, nope. If I don't like you, I don't like you. Fuck a bag. I don't want a bag. If, you, if I don't like you, I don't like you for life. There are bitches to this day I do not like for life. Fuck them. Okay? Especially if you disrespect me and mine. Fuck you for life. You know what I mean? That's how I get down. So, you know, with men... They're willing to like kind of like work with each other. But I think after this, I think sides have been chosen. And Drake sees that, you know, these guys are not fooling with him. They used them for the Drake stimulus package and he's done. You live and learn. And remember, Eminem, you know, predicted all of this. He said, you know, first they'll like you. They'll be there for you. They'll rock with you. And then eventually you'll get so big that they turn on you. So... Drake is just having his moment. He got too big for his britches. He's the face of hip hop, rap. Like it or not, he is. He's the most paid, the most visible, you know? So he has a lot of power in the industry. He really does. And is Drake perfect? Absolutely not. Cause like I've told you guys, I'm not a big Drake fan anymore at all. Cause he's done a lot of weird shit. So he's not perfect by any means. But when it comes to like this particular song, this diss record, I liked it. I really liked it. And like I said, Rick Ross had some bars too, but it's still ironic though. Like, you know, you're body shaming and accusing him of a surgery. Meanwhile, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, let's not talk about bodies. Let's not talk about police. You know what I mean? It's just kind of weird. Let's not talk about snatching chains because the MMG chain went on a world tour in 2012 like literally some kid had the 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 chain on in a music video i forgot whose kid it was so that's all i'm saying somebody said ross is sexy though he might be i'm not saying that he's not i think ross has like a fun personality though i do like rick ross's personality like he's funny like as far as like the little antics and stuff that he does on social media i can see why people find that sexy you know but as far as like his body, I don't find his body sexy. That's just my, he probably don't find my body sexy. I'm gonna fuck. That's just my opinion. But I think like as far as his personality, I think he has a sexy personality. I like his voice. But you know, some people, you know, don't find K Dot sexy because he's short, you know. But I love his gap. I, I'm here. I love Kendrick. I can like listen to, I can like watch Kendrick Lamar interview like all day. Like I just love his, I, but y'all know I have a thing for gaps. Probably because I have like really straight teeth. So I, I like gaps. I can't be no big, you know, next two, two miles. It can't be that. But like just like a little slit, little, you know what I mean? Like, ooh, y'all love me a gap. <laughs> How did I get on that? <laughs> I love Kendrick Lamar's gap. I just think it's so cute. Somebody say Kendrick Lamar looks musty. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm not fooling with y'all. The chat is wildin'. Y'all said Rick Ross is sexy and Kendrick Lamar looks musty. Oh. <laughs> y'all are a mess. Oh my gosh. Not him looking musty. I think 
think I think K Dot is cute. He's just short, but I think he's cute. I like his smile. I like his his gap. I think J Cole is definitely fine, but again, Jermaine, Jermaine is disappointing me. It's gonna take me a while to like mm, to get back on the Jermaine train. <laughs> but um, y'all, this has been a dope stream. I appreciate y'all coming through. Um, let's see, Ronaldo number nine. Okay, okay. Shout out to Ronaldo number nine. Ronaldo number nine says the men are bringing hip hop back. Okay, they are. I can't wait to see everybody's response. I really can't. I cannot wait to see everybody's response. Um, I see Black Keisha. Sent 10 says, I've been watching you for about 10 years. I'm usually a lurker, but I finally caught a live. Thank you for all you do. Thanks for helping me become a woman who sees all sides of things. That is awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you were able to catch a live today. So maybe I should go live on Sundays more. We have a whole different audience in here, which is nice. Um, Mini Senpai says, love you, T. Shout out to the Discord. Rick Ross looks like a scratch and dent refrigerator. Shut up. <laughs> Y'all are such a mess. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Let's see here. I want to make sure I got it by Bree. Sent 1999. She says, hey, T. Hey, Bree. Thank you. Um, Mariah sent 1999. She says, auntie, your videos slash lives have been getting me through my long nights at Amazon Warehouse for the past three years, passed my medical assistant certification with a 98% two weeks ago, and now I'm about to quit. Love you and thank you. That is awesome. Congratulations, Mariah, and good luck on the newest chapter of your life. That is really good that you're able to quit your Amazon job and your dream job is right around the corner. So thank you for coming through and showing love, sis. I appreciate y'all. Um, let's see here. Uh, Alana Sin 20 says, T is looking stunning. Stay fabulous. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Um, uh, Nay Sin $20 says, T, I'm loving this lyrical breakdown. We need more beef classic rap songs with the breakdown. Definitely. Okay, I think I got everything. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry, but thank you guys so much for coming through. This was a fun stream. It was awesome to break down these lyrics and just, you know, the stuff that's going on between Drake and the rest of the guys in the industry. It's going to be interesting to see if John Morant, who wants to be a bootleg rapper himself, wonder if he's going to get in the booth and say something back to, you know, uh, Drake. I wonder if Kanye will respond. So it's going to be interesting. So I'm definitely here for this as long as it stays on wax. I just want everything to stay on wax. We don't want, you know, any violence. It's not that serious. We just want stuff to stay on wax. So on that note, you guys, I am out. Thank you guys for watching. Have a happy Sunday. Love you guys. I'll talk to y'all later.